Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. June 19th, Stuart Epperson. Stuart Epperson grew up on a tobacco farm. When he was about 16, he and a buddy were hoeing corn on a mountainside in Virginia when they saw smoke rising nearby. They ran to check it out. It turned out to be one of Stu's relatives and the buddy's brother operating a corn liquor still. Stu's first shot at being an entrepreneur. He said that summer was when he knew he'd been created for entrepreneurship. He went on to found the Salem Media Group, the leading U.S. radio broadcaster, internet content provider, and magazine publisher for Christian and traditional values programming. He has more than 100 radio stations, including 67 in all of the top 25 markets, and SRN News, with more than 2,400 affiliates. On this day in 1967, Stu founded the Winston-Salem Rescue Mission. He also founded Salem Pregnancy Support Center, One Kid at a Time, the Christian Association of Youth Mentoring, and Kids Extreme, an inner-city Christian youth program focusing on Section 8 housing. Not bad for a boy hauling moonshine. Today's story takes place at a moment in Stu's grown-up family life. The man who understands his influence can use it for generations to come. One December morning, almost as soon as Stuart Epperson had settled in his office, he learned someone had broken into his son's home. There was gunfire, and his daughter-in-law, Julie, was there. Epperson grabbed his phone and dialed her. Her phone rang, and it rang, and it rang. At last, Julie picked up. With a crack in her voice, she told Stuart what had happened. Like every weekday morning, she dropped the kids off at school and had gone back home. She was pulling back into their garage when she saw a pile of shattered glass on the ground. And the door she had just locked moments ago was now standing wide open. Instinctively, she grabbed her phone from her purse and managed to dial 911. She threw the car into reverse to back out of the garage, but a man in a black ski mask appeared at the door with a gun in his hand. He shouted at her to get out of the car, but she floored it instead and he opened fire. Two shots exploded from his 45, but both bullets miraculously missed her. Julie's car slammed into a tree and the criminal escaped on foot. Within minutes, the police arrived and found Julie at a neighbor's home, shaken, but happy to be alive. Police also discovered that as he fled the scene, the criminal had dropped his ski mask and his knife, evidence they could use to bring the masked man to justice. On the day that appointment with justice arrived, Epperson accompanied Julie to the hearing where the criminal would be sentenced for attempted murder. Having worked with troubled youth through various organizations he had founded, Epperson was familiar with the process. But this time, a young man's anger had literally come to his family's doorstep, nearly taking Julie's life. Through all of this, it had been a challenge for Epperson to respond in a way that honored God. Rather than take this personal story to the airwaves of his national media empire or use his power to destroy the young man who'd nearly destroyed his own family, Epperson showed up in court and looked for an opportunity to positively influence the outcome. Could any good come out of this? When it came time for sentencing, the judge allowed family members to speak on the criminal's behalf. The only male family member present was his great-grandfather, With tears welling in his eyes, the old man told the court he was a good boy who fell in with the wrong crowd. Mr. Epperson asked the judge for permission to speak to the court, and he asked why this boy's father or his grandfather were not here for such an important hearing. It came out, sadly, neither one had been involved in the young criminal's life. Two generations of fathers had been absent from duty, and the judge said he saw this all the time. Epperson later wrote about the experience. Prisons are full of young men who have fathers, if they can be found. As a founding board member of Christian Association of Youth Mentoring, 
He is committed to help lead troubled young men out of a lifetime of bad choices. This happens through close relationship with father figures who are willing to invest in the young men. Over the years, Epperson has seen the lives of many young men restored. Epperson said, I have witnessed the positive result when an absentee father or adult male mentor chooses to get involved in a child's life. Forging an emotional bond is true fatherhood and the best hope to stop this epidemic. 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 says, Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. You have influence. Use it productively. The man who understands his influence can use it for generations to come. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.